Okay, well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today we have uh, Jamie Conlon. He's the National Account Manager for IMOs at F&G Life. So he's going to tell us everything that we need to know to write F&G's indexed universal life insurance, okay? And yes, this is being recorded, and I'm sorry you can't see his face. That's a fail on our side, um, and it will be posted in our resources library. So I'll preface this by saying we are testing an IUL lead right now and hope to be bringing an IUL lead option out in the very near future. And, uh, you know, at the very least, you guys, FNG's product is considered to be a top tier IUL product in the market. And it's a good one to pick up and sell, even if it's a cross sell or, you know, to your, to your warm market. Okay. It's got a great first year commission and it's just a competitive product. So Jamie, I'm going to get out of the way here and let you take it away. Hey, I appreciate it, Jeff. And uh, thank you to the Digital BGA team for having us on and everybody who uh, uh, took time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today. Uh, again, my name is Jamie Conlon. I am the National Account Manager here at Fidelity and Guarantee. And I'm also joined by Sandy Beheimer. She's my senior internal wholesaler. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, kind of who we are here at FNG. We're going to go through our corporate structure. Just give you a quick overview on that. And then we will dive into our products and then a little bit um, more on the resources that we do make available to you as well. So, um, so here you can see my picture. My email here is jamie.conlon at fglife.com. So feel free to email me at any time. Um, and then Sandy's email here as well at sandy.beheimer at fglife.com. So if you want, uh, take a quick picture of it. We will also send copies of these slides to Jeff for him to distribute out to anybody and everybody that was on this call as well. Uh, oh. Jamie, hi everybody. Uh, this is Sandy. My name is spelled incorrectly here. I think we had grabbed an old slide, so I put it in the chat. So if you want to pull it out of the chat. Okay, perfect. So if we can go to the next slide. So again, we'll be discussing who we are here at FNG. We'll go through our products and then also additional resources when partnering with us here at Fidelity and Guarantee. So um, if you look at kind of our timeline, uh, we started in 1959. Uh, so we're a little over 60, 62 years old. But if we kind of fast forward to the early 2000s, for those of you who've been in the industry for quite some time, uh, you may remember us under the name of Old Mutual. Uh, at that time, we were one of the largest term insurers in the industry. Uh, and then when we uh, had the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, we rebranded back under the name of Old Mutual. And, and from there, we started to move our headquarters from where they were located in Baltimore, Maryland, to Des Moines, Iowa. And that was very strategic. So if you realize there's a bunch of carriers in the Des Moines, Iowa area. Um, so <clears throat> so uh, moving to Des Moines allowed us to have pick from a much larger talent pool out there. So we are currently headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa. And then in 2017, we decided and we partnered with Blackstone Insurance Solutions uh, they are the largest originator of high quality, high yielding debt instruments globally. Um, so what they do for us is they manage our general account in tandem. Uh, sorry, is my connection okay here? You're, you're good on my end. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure. So, um, so with Blackstone Insurance Solutions, they manage our general account. So as those premium dollars come in, uh, they manage the, that pool of funds in tandem with our chief investment officer. Um, and so, uh, so what they do is they bring us high quality, high yielding debt instrument opportunities that maybe we didn't have the opportunity to invest in or even vet. They give us first right of refusal and any of those we take advantage of, any return we would receive over and above our required return, we pass that on 100% to the policyholder. We do not hold that back um, for profit for us. We pass that on in way of a higher options budget. So what you'll see later in this presentation is that with that higher options budget, we are able to offer much higher cap rates on our S&P, uh, participation rates, no charge bonuses, along with our fixed account crediting strategy. And then also in 2020, we were purchased by Fidelity National Financial. They are the largest title insurer in the US. 
Um, so basically when uh, you're doing a mortgage or a refi, you see this line item for $500. What is that? That is title insurance. That's what Fidelity National Financial does. So in times of low interest rate environments, they have a huge influx of cash that they are able to repurpose for growing companies like ourselves. Um, now, what's great about our relationship is in times of higher interest rate environments, as their business begins to tighten, we become more profitable as a life and annuity carrier. So there's a true inverse relationship here with us and Fidelity National Financial. Also, um, we did a uh, spin off 15% of the company late last year in IPO. So currently 85% is owned by Fidelity National Financial, 15% is uh, uh, was spun off and IPO'd, I think it was in late November, early December of 2022. Uh, and that was strategic as well. You know, our, the board at FNF, our higher ups at FNG didn't feel like we were getting the recognition for all the good and hard work we've been doing and all the growth. Um, so hopefully from that spinoff, we will see uh, much more value. And again, we have that relationship with Blackstone. So what does that mean for you? Um, we're able to bring a more stable, but also dependable product to our distribution partners such as yourself. So, and real quick, just to kind of go over our growth over the last few years, um, in 2020, uh, we closed the year at 56 million in target premium. Uh, in 2021, that jumped from 56 million to 87 million. And then from 22 to 23, or 21 to 22, we closed at over 127 million in target premium. And keep in mind, we are a accumulation IUL only carrier. So we do one thing and we do it very, very well. Um, and if you look at our employee growth as well, in January of 2020, we had about 250 employees. Today, we have just under a thousand. So we've been growing very rapidly. Um, we know it's not sustainable forever, but uh, we do project to have this growth for the next few years, if not the next three to five years. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Sandy to jump into our product portfolio. Hi, everybody. Again, Sandy Beheimer here. I'm the senior internal wholesaler on the sales desk. Sorry that you can't see Jamie and I today, but hopefully in the future, um, we will fix that. And Jamie Actually, will send you a... Go ahead. I don't, to, I don't mean to interrupt you. I fixed it. You can turn your cameras on now. I figured it out. There we go. There we go. <laughs> all right. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, Sandy. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. Hi, everybody. So again, my name is Sandy, and today we are going to talk about our uh, pants that are IUL. But before we jump into that, I don't have a slide for it, but I wanted to touch on our Everlast uh, Index Universal Life. So we only carry Index Universal Life, so no term products, uh, no whole life products or anything, just index products are what our focus is on the life side. And the Everlast is going to be more focused on a death benefit solve. So if you have a client, especially an older client, that is simply needing um, insurance coverage, probably going to pay less than target or minimum funding, that's when you would wanna jump to the Everlast. You're gonna find that it is um, gonna give you a little bit better premium in most situations. You don't have as much cash accumulation, so it's because it's not a cash accumulation driven product. Uh, it does also have a two year rolling target, which is helpful when those clients are not paying target. Um, that way you get paid that full target by the second year that our past setter doesn't offer that, but that uh, it's usually overfunded. So most people hit that target in the first year, but on the Everlast, you know, you do have the rolling target. So if you're ever not sure about which one to write, don't hesitate to ask Jamie or I, I'm going to say about 95% of the business is coming in under the past setter product uh, for accumulation. So you don't come across those cases often. For the Everlast, but if you do, just know we have that product as well. So, as I've mentioned already, um, our the past setter is an accumulation focused index universal life. The goal of this product is to is to create maximum upside opportunity to increase cash value for your clients while also providing with them with downside protection, living benefits, and of course death benefit. Some of our different differentiators uh, are going to be that high competitive cap and participation rates that Jamie mentioned. 
the protective value of our 5% contractually guaranteed variable loan rate, um, our proprietary uh, index, the, the Barclays um, Sector 5, which we're going to touch on a little bit more later, that has no cap and a very high participation rate. And of course, our robust living benefits and our underwriting program. So these are all designed to make the process easier for the agent and for the client. So let's kind of dig in here, since most of you, it sounds like, are going to be new to our product. Our issue ages are going to be zero to 80. So, and the minimum face amount is $50,000. So you might ask, who's this product really good for? Well, I like to say it's generally good for everyone. So whether or not you're trying to build a case for a family and you're doing you know, a combination of juvenile policies with cash accumulation, but you need a little protection um, with a monthly, low monthly premium payment, or maybe you're trying to build that case with a client that's doing legacy planning or supplemental retirement planning with large face amount or large dollar amounts. Either one, $100 a month premium to $100,000 a year premium, we'll take it all. There's really no limit. And this product can actually be designed to fit either scenario from, from that juvenile policy up to those large estate planning policies. So keep that in mind, it's extremely flexible. As we've already mentioned, we have that guaranteed maximum variable loan rate of 5%. Um, if you're used to the word participating, that's exactly what that is. Variable uh, and participating are interchangeable. So that's our guaranteed 5%, which right now in this uh, rising interest rate environment, um, this is uh, the times when your clients are going to be glad that if they're borrowing money right now, that they would have that guaranteed maximum on their interest rate that's being charged on the variable loan. And then of course we offer the fixed loan. It's a 2% net charge in the first 10 years and then basically a wash loan in years 11 and later. And then withdrawals are available up to 20% surrender charge free in that surrender charge period of 15 years. So then the account value enhancements, talking about um, our index crediting options here. We have the 1% bonus in policy years two uh, and later on our high bonus SMP and our Barclay strategy. Now, when I show you those rates here momentarily, you'll notice that the S&P account that has the 1% bonus is going to have a lower cap than the one-year uh, annual point-to-point -point without the bonus. And then we have the 0.25 persistency bonus that starts in year 11 on all of our strategies. So at this point, we haven't even gotten to the guaranteed minimum interest crediting rate, but potentially if your client is using, for example, the Barclays um, and they're in year 11 of their contract, before the year even starts, they know they're going to get that, you know, 1.25% interest rate. And that's really beneficial as the client starts to turn and withdraw from these contracts um, so that they, they know that money's going in and even in markets that might, in years that the market might, might not be performing. And then we do offer the 0.25% minimum guaranteed interest crediting rate. Uh, or what most of you would call a floor. So where most carriers, you know, like to call it zero is your hero. I heard our VP call this that we are the superhero because we offer the 0.25% bonus or guaranteed interest credit rate. And so I've kind of stolen that from her. Um, so we have that floor. So essentially uh, with, that, with that in addition by year 11, you potentially have clients that are getting that 1.50 right off the bat, regardless of how the market is going to perform. As far as charges and expenses, um, our premium charge, it shows there is 9%. I'm not going to dig into this uh, deeply, but just know that the charges on the past setter are higher in that first 10 years or so. Um, so if you're going to do a comparison to another carrier, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually doing the comparison uh, for the long run, looking deep into the contract so you can see how we will outperform um, after we get outside of that first 10 years. So keep that in mind. And then we also offer the 15-year um, no lapse guarantee as long as the client's paid the minimum premium in during that time frame. We never recommend that you underfund an index universal life product, but we all know that things happen. People are laid off, jobs are lost, COVID occurs, things like that. Um, so sometimes you might need to dial the policy down and you have the ability to do that and still keep it in force for at least that 15 years. 
So let so, me elaborate on a couple items real quick. Um, sure. So you know, from we are a current age carrier. We are not age nearest. So when you're within six months of your birthday, most age near or all the age nearest carriers, you're that next age with us. You are your current age until your birthday. So that's a very strong selling point. And then I just want to elaborate a little more on the variable loan. So with most carriers, their variable loan rate ranges anywhere from four to eight percent. Um, as we experience these interest rates going up, these carriers are going to be able to charge anywhere from five, six, seven, even as high as eight percent for their variable loans. Where again, your client knows the backstop with us is five percent. We will never charge them more. So that is a huge selling point that we will never go above that five percent charge rate for a variable loan. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. And feel free if you have questions as we're going through this, um, throw them in the chat and Jamie will either uh, interrupt me and answer those questions or answer them on the chat for you. So here are our index crediting options. Um, and it looks like I didn't update that we didn't update this yet, but our new uh, S&P 500, we just had a great change um, on our cap on our cap and it went from 12 and a half to 12 and a half to 12 percent and our new illustrated rate went from 7.19 to 7.16 based on the refresher at the end of the year um, not a big deal not a significant change um, that's the only change I believe that we had and then the illustrated rate did change on the Barclays at the six point it is currently 6.62 but keep in mind that illustrated rate is not reflecting the one percent bonus that starts in year two that will be reflected on the illustration. So obviously, you know, the 145% cap with the bonus there on the Barclays makes it a very strong performer for us. It's a volatility controlled index. So it has the ability to kind of keep up when, the, you know, when the market is volatile like it is right now, so that um, you can kind of reduce the risk level for your clients. In addition, we do offer the fixed account, and currently our fixed rate is 4.75. It's been there for quite a while. It hasn't changed. Um, I'm not aware of any uh, anticipation of that changing. And I think you'll find that in general, our S&P caps, our fixed rate, are all probably top of the line in the industry right now. You probably, I don't think any of our competitors are close to either one of those numbers. So that's a big win for us, and we're very proud of that. And we're excited to the, by the fact that we're able to actually maintain those numbers. It's not just for new business, it's for enforced business. And it's really important to F&G to have that uh, longstanding history for, for our clients. So building on our competitive positioning here, this is showing you a, a scenario with a female age 45, minimum non-MEC death benefit increasing um, Increasing death benefit and switching to level once we stop the premiums, $25,000 a year to age 65, and then distributions. Um, if you're using the, the Barclays Trailblazer Sectors 5 index, you can see here that the max annualized distribution is significantly higher, and the death benefit is very reasonable um, in this particular product if your goal is max distribution. If you remove all of the carriers that are not that are using um, non s p accounts, again, F&G is top of the market with their distribution using simply the S&P 500 annual point to point and the same with the death benefit. So very competitive. And then I think we have, nope, I only had the one slide on that. Did you have anything you want to add on that, Jamie? Uh, real quick, so Chris asked, um, when when it comes to loans, do we credit the credit those loans or not? So the way it's going to work is on a fixed loan. So say you had ten thousand dollars loaned out, that would not receive any type of crediting. But on the variable loans, uh, think of it as kind of a ghost account, right? So say you have the $10,000 loaned out, that would still receive crediting over and above whatever that um, charge rate is for the variable loan. So let's say we're at 5% today, you get a 10% return. That $10,000 will receive a 5% credit, right? 10 minus five, all other dollars would receive the 10% credit. So good question. Uh, so variable loans will get crediting. Um, as long as there is over and above the credit charge or the charge rate, 
uh, fixed loans will not receive any type of crediting. Thank you. And now let's talk about the living benefits. So most of you know that life insurance products have changed significantly over the last decade or two. Um, I know when I was an agent, living benefit writers were just starting to come out into the market and they were, you know, few and far between. And today it's pretty common on a product that they're going to be added. So of course, FNG has these, um, the terminal, the critical, cri ah, critical terminal and chronic available on all of our products. And we believe the benefits are frequently used and it's an additional reason to purchase the life insurance, whether your client is buying this for a protection need or a cash accumulation need. And it allows the client to access a portion or all of their death benefit in the event of an illness or injury. So we offer, um, like I said, the critical illness, terminal illness and chronic illness. And the client has the ability to access up to 100% of their death benefit up to a million dollars. They are built a little bit differently. For the critical illness plan, we have a list of covered illnesses that are available for acceleration. And for terminal illness, the acceleration is available if the client has a life expectancy of less than 24 months or 12 months in the state of Florida, both up to 100% of the death benefit capped at a million dollars. And then on the chronic illness rider, it's available if the client is unable to perform two of six of their activities of daily living or has um, severe cognitive impairment. With the case with the chronic, it processes a little bit differently. The client has access to up to 25% of their death benefit with availability of additional accelerations up to 100% of that death benefit up to a million dollars, but they do need to recertify each year. The only exception to that is in California. In that case, they have access to the whole 100% of the death benefit in year one of the claim. We just recommend that they talk to a tax advisor before they access that because there might be a tax consequence. And then in addition, the big thing with these writers are there's no additional fee unless, you, unless the client actually turns them on. We have no waiting period on ours. So if your client purchases the policy and six months later has, has a you know, serious injury or illness, they have the ability to potentially file a claim that soon into the contract. In addition, we leave the writers on the contracts based on client age, um, of course, and state regulation. They stay on the contract up to a table four. So I find that that's pretty significant. Most carriers are dropping them off at a table two or three, B or C, and we actually are leaving them on through table four. So your, you know, your standard clients that you know are rated for maybe diabetes or uh, build, and and they're still under that table four rating. They're going to get all of these chronic illness riders. Uh, again, I think that's one of the few things in the industry that we're seeing here is the no waiting period and the fact that we have that available longer than most carriers. And then my favorite topic is the exam-free underwriting. So if you've not been exposed to F&G before, um, we hope that you're excited about this. So our exam-free underwriting is 100% exam-free for ages zero to 60, up to a million dollars. So we won't even accept the pyramid. So if um, they can get the preferred or super preferred, or not super preferred, standard or preferred rating, um, and 90% of our exam-free applicants are getting approved at those ratings. In the event that they need to get a phone interview or we need medical records, um, they can potentially get a rated offer all the way to table eight, still without having to have a paramed blood or urine. Um, again, we might need a phone interview, we might need um, medical records in some scenarios, but for the most part, these cases are going through without any of that information, and they potentially, even rated cases, go through without, uh, without the pyramid blood and urine. Of course, we still take that business over a million dollars, and over age 60, um, they would just need the pyramid exam at that point. For non-U.S. citizens, and we are uh, very flexible in the non-U.S. citizen market. I'd like to make sure that you're aware of that. For non-U.S. citizens, it's up to $300,000 up to age 60 exam-free. And then what you'll find right now is that most of our exam-free applications are actually being approved, not necessarily issued, but approved. Uh, right now, I'm seeing actually three to four days if the case is in good order. 
and we don't need a phone interview and we don't um, need pair, you know, medical records for any reason. So that's really turning them around quickly. And we have some other things coming later uh, in the year, some, you know, some improvements where we're trying to get that juvenile to the point that it's going to be an instant issue as long as there's no health issues involved. And I'll let Jamie build on that a little bit more if he has something he wants to add with some of the things that are coming. But, you know, this is really one of the big wins for F&G right now is this exam-free underwriting because you can get the cases in and out so quickly. Um, so you take it from the time it comes in the door, if everything's in good order and we don't have any surprises, um, you know, potentially you have that case in your hand in around a two-week turnaround time to deliver to your client. So very exciting. And I think that's really what is making us continue to climb in addition to our performance is this exam-free underwriting. Yep, hold on. I'll just go back real quick. So sure. um, just to elaborate a little more on exam free, uh, this isn't non-med agile underwriting or any of those programs. It's not that potential for no exam, no labs. It is truly, truly exam and lab free through age 60 through a million. So what are we doing on our end? We're pulling a bunch of data checks. So this would be MIB, your MVR, RX, um, <clears throat> lab history score, soft credit check. So we pull all that data and we put it up to the application in the part two. So the more detailed the part two is, the more opportunity for us to have that um, offer within that you know, five days or less. So if we can't make an offer or say something pops up on the MIB or the MVR or even the RX check, then that's where we would order the phone interview. It isn't to go through the full application process. It's just to get that clarifying data of what popped up. Typically, these phone calls last 10 to 15 minutes at most. They get that identifying info. From there, typically, we're making an offer. If we still can't, then that's where that APS requirement would come in. But if you look at fully underwritten along with our exam-free process, only about 10 to 12% of our cases have an APS on them. So we are really not in the business of ordering medical records unless it is a true, true last resort and we just have to have it. So, um, and then if anybody's doing foreign national business, this program is available for your foreign national or non-US citizen residents as well. The only thing that we do limit, it's not the age, it is the coverage amount to 300,000. If they apply over half or over 300,000, then we would just do a full exam in labs at that point. But keep in mind, most carriers are fully underwritten for all their foreign national or non-US citizen business. We still do make exam free available up to a max of 300,000. Do you have a, a resource on the approved visas and countries that you, okay. Right. Yep. So uh, there's, I think we have 17 listed visas that we accept. If it's not on that list, it doesn't mean we're in a black box. We will look at them on an individual consideration basis. And I'll, when we send you the follow-up, I'll include the uh, foreign national guidelines for you as well. Thanks, Jamie. And to kind of build on that with the um, phone interviews. So if the client misses the call or doesn't take the call because people don't answer their phone, we have the phone number, so it's available. Usually they put it out on the agent portal when they order a phone interview so that you can give it to your client and they can call in at their own convenience to do the phone interview. And I always like to highlight, Jamie mentioned part two or the medical questions. So um, the most common phone interview is a result of that not matching what shows up on an MIB or an MVR. So just keep that in mind that the client, you know, if, if they give you all of the information and you're able to include it on the application, or if you don't know where to include it, you can add a note to it. Um, that's going to help to eliminate that, um, that uh, phone interview. And we always have an underwriter available. You can call through new business or call through the sales team and ask to speak to an underwriter and they can assist you with all kinds of questions. Your non-US citizens, the visas, um, medical history, driving history, criminal history, um, whatever the situation is, we have an underwriter that will you know, speak to the agent and help them to understand how they want to rate the case when they're illustrating it. So again, why F and G? We've talked about our strong product performance and reliable uh, rate history. Jamie built on that 5% contractually guaranteed loan. That's extremely valuable if you're building cash accumulation cases. And of course, the accelerated benef death benefits and the exam-free underwriting. 
But I think important also is the support that you would get in for uh, with Jamie and myself, as well as our teams that are available to help you, whether it's building a case, designing an illustration, or problem solving a new business case, um, any of those things, we're available to assist you, uh, whatever the need will be. And also sometimes just to get you to someone else. Uh, if you don't know who to call or where to go, uh, we're your resource and we can get you headed in the right direction. I mentioned the underwriting risk assessment. So there's the phone number for new business, the 800-445-6758, option two, then option one. Or you can shoot Jamie or I an email with the specs that you need, and we can actually shoot it up via email. Uh, just make sure you give us complete data, um, the gender, the age, the health issues you know about, and their medications. And if heightened weight's involved, you know, we need to have that information as well. Um, in addition, your clients, once they get their new policy issued, they're going to have access to the policyholder portal at the mypolicy.fglife.com. There will be a flyer in the issued policy that tells them how to get logged on to that. And we highly recommend that because those folks who hate to call in, like myself, um, to make a change on a premium or update an address or something like that, um, they can get online and either generate the form if a form is needed or actually make the change online. So uh, very helpful for the agent and the client if the client takes advantage of that. And then your, your um, link for managing your business, both new business and enforced business, as well as ordering or downloading materials and forms, running your illustrations or submitting your e-application is going to be on saleslink.fglife.com. Just kind of FYI, our illustration software is iPipeline. Our e-application is Firelight. They do not link. So for those who are used to the something linking, um, you actually have to save the PDF out of the illustration software on your desktop. And then the e-application is very clear on how to upload that PDF and it actually gets signed when your application gets signed. So it's really rather convenient. It just doesn't carry over from the illustration software. Um, last, I think this is almost last, we do have a separate training portal. It's called a microsite for our agents where you can go out and do illustration training. Um, there's some advanced sales support out there um, on business planning, et cetera. And this does not require a login. So you can uh, go to success.fglife.com forward slash life dash insurance. And there you can register for our biweekly trainings um, that are open to everyone that sells the past set of product, has the ability to sell the past set of product. Um, and then there's also um, pre-recorded webinars out there. So you can watch them at your own convenience. And there are lots of other resources out there as well. Our um, underwriting guidelines are out there, the exam-free underwriting, the list for foreign nationals. And I'm sure Jamie will include that when he sends his follow-up email. He always includes that uh, website so that you have that. Just know that it is not approved for client use. So you can't share this site with your client. And that is all I have. So let's see what questions Jamie has. So there's a question in regards to <clears throat> contracting. So just so you know, um, for those who aren't contracted as of today with us, we are a pre-appointment carrier. So we do require the appointment on the front end. And really the reason for that is 98 plus percent of our business comes in via e-application. And to have access to that e-application, you have to have access to sales link which is our agent agency portal. That is truly where you're gonna run all of your day-to-day -day operation, that is FNG. Um, so we do require appointment on the front end. Uh, what's really cool is our contracting team is very good at what they do. They turn around these contracts in 48 hours or less. So uh, very quick, it isn't a one, two, four week waiting period. Uh, these are done in a couple of days. Just to build on that contracting question because we run across it frequently on the sales desk and that is, we are only going to appoint you typically in your resident state to start with because we have so many agents and so many are appointed in so many states and there's a cost involved to each one of those. So when you need to write business in another state, you'll just email contracting. Um, that information is available on the website. If you don't have that email address and you need it, just send it to Jamie or I and we'll forward it for you. And again, they turn those around very quickly. But if you're, you know, all of a sudden want to write, you know, a case in a state that you're um, contracted in, but not appointed in, 
you have to get that done before you'll be able to do, you know, finalize an EAP. You can start an EAP, you just won't be able to validate the state until we get you appointed in that state. Can you walk us through the application process? So everyone here on this call sells over the phone. Um, and I know it's the, it's the EAP. Is it, uh, is, it, is it an e-sign? Can you walk us through it? Do you want me to share that, Jamie? Uh, yeah, just go ahead and walk them through it. get logged in here. Yeah, if you can show us the application and then where to run illustrations and everything in here, that would be helpful for everyone All getting right. started. Well, I'll get you started in it. We won't be able to go through the whole e-app, but I'll show you what it looks like and, and kind of give you the hurdles that most people run into. Um, it's a pretty simple process. So this is what your agent portal will look like. So over here on the left, a couple of important things are going to be uh, searching for. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, true. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Let's see. Forgotten that I stopped sharing. Good. You see me now? Yes. All right. So this is your agent portal. And so this is what will pop up when you first log in. So over here under my business is your search enforce policies and your new business policies. So that's once the policy is submitted, um, this is where you're going to be able to uh, manage it and control it is under search new business. Uh, product information is out here as well as on our um, the microsite that Jamie will send you that link to. Illustration software is going to be under sales tools and illustrations. You would just go in here. This is just generic on one big button. And then you would start new case or go to your case listings. Any time that we run an illustration for you, um, it's going to be under your login. So if you email me or call me and have me run an illustration for you, um, I am going to run it under your login. So you'll be able to see that, modify it, et cetera, um, which I find is, is helpful. And then the e-application is going to be under forms and online application. And it's loading. A little slow here. We're I'm in Northern Kentucky and we are having crazy, crazy rain today. So I think it's slowing my internet down a little bit. So you're gonna come here um, and in this case, we're gonna do a life product. So we're gonna just hit the select button. But before I do that here on your um, right-hand side is a link for the training video. So if you'd like to do that, um, what I find happens is a lot of times you can get in here and play around. You can't hurt anything as long as you don't submit it. Um, but sometimes you, you know, I like to get in there and dive in and then go back to the training video to see what I couldn't figure out. So you're just gonna hit select. It's loading. And in this particular case, we're just going to start a new case, right? So start new application. Choose the state that you're writing in. Let's just say California. Which product? We're going to do path setter. And then we're just going to hit create. I always say change this little pop-up here to the name of your client so that when you're going back into the case, you can tell the difference between, you know, husband, wife, mom, dad, children, whatever it is you're doing, and you can find the case later if you need to. Just hit create. And so you mentioned that most of yours are going to be video conferencing. You're going to be doing Zooms or on your cases. So you're going to choose that. Um, with video conferencing, the application state always has to be the state that the client is in uh, or their resident state. So um, if, if you're in, like in my case in Kentucky and you're writing a, your clients in California, you have to make sure that that's what matches and you have to be appointed in this state. 
even if you're going to sign it in Florida or Kentucky or wherever, um, the client will be signing in that state. And you just follow these little arrows. And again, I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to show you some highlights here. This is where you'll be validating. So this is the case we're here. See, it wants you to put your little split, how much you're getting on it, and you have to validate. If you're not appointed in a specific state, it's not going to let you validate. It's going to give you an error. It'll let you bypass it. It gives you a box that says you're not appointed here. Don't bypass it. You'll have problems. Your case will be in NIGO, and you might have to resubmit it. Just get in touch with contracting or Jamie or myself and make sure you're appointed in that state if you're getting an error there. Otherwise, it's pretty simple, that process there. We're going to skip the California stuff. Any place you see these yellow boxes, those signat are signature boxes. You're going to do that in step two. We're only in step one in data entry. So you don't need to worry about signing when you're in those, in those um, when you see those boxes. But you do have to watch for all these little tiny red marks so that you know what you need to read and check. Again, we're going to skip California stuff here. I want to just get to the app and then I'll show you. So everything that pops up in red obviously has to be completed. Your primary insured section, this is for the insured. So if this is a minor, they're not going to have an identification. So you're just going to type in here something like child. Um, you do have to put an issue in. So in this case, we were doing California. So, you know, you're going to want to go ahead and just put that in, even though you don't have an ID. Other you know, child. I always show this because we get this question so often. Um, and then obviously child's not going to be employed. There is going to be a question about U.S. citizenship um, for the insured and for the owner. And again, child's not going to need the information, but you would then, and earned income is for the child as well. So if this is for a child, it's going to be zero. Uh, email address and phone numbers would be for the parent or the grandparent or whoever we're contacting for the application. So general application questions, pretty simple. If you get stuck and you can't figure out what you didn't complete, you're going to go to this open button up here where I was at, see the little open arrow? And it's going to say, hey, you missed a box down here on page 11 of the application. And you're like looking, looking, where's the box? So there's little red boxes there. You didn't answer your agent certification. So just kind of look for that. And it will tell you in these little red boxes up here what you missed as well. See, it kind of highlights it. So that little pop-up screen. So we get a lot of calls um, for things like they're 99% and they can't get it to finalize. We just go to this open button and we can, you know, you can go there and do that, but we off, we can go there as well. We can log in and see your full application. So uh, if you get stuck, you can always call me and I can get in and see what you missed. So uh, I mentioned the illustration. Um, so on the illustration, you are going to, I always say, um, especially if you're not meeting with the client in person, you're going to do it unsigned. And then you're going to get the pop-up to be able to actually upload the unsigned illustration. So you would just click here. You have to go out to your computer and find the illustration and upload it, just like if you were going to attach a document to an email, right? It works the same way. And then don't forget, after you get it uploaded, you have to come back here and click the second box. Otherwise, it'll stay incomplete. And again, I'm just running through some of the highlights. Don't worry about HIPAA. Once everything else on the application is complete, it will turn black. And then client identification. We have a little bit of a different process here. And so we do require when you're doing virtual applications that you provide a photo of the client and a photo of the driver's license. What normally you would do is exactly what this picture is showing. You're on the Zoom meeting with the client. You simply had them hold up their license. You do your best to use your phone and take a picture. Save it preferably as the JPEG or as a PDF, um, and then you're going to upload it just like you did the illustration. Now we will take separates. So if you don't have the ability to do that, or if the client prefers to send you, um, you know, via text their photo and their driver's license or their own selfie holding their driver's license, any combination of that will work. But you do have to upload that here, and this is going to be for the owner, um, not for the insured. We don't need pictures of minor children. So just keep that in mind. Um, and in general, we do need to be able to read it. But I honestly have 
very, very, very few cases where they ask for a repeat copy of the driver's license. Um, if they do, we just send that to new business separately. Uh, let me get back up here to so my air. Just real quick, the reason for this, it's part of the know your customer uh, rules and guidelines that have come out. <clears throat> so it is something that we are looking at potentially getting removed. Um, down the road, but as of today, if you are doing any of these um, applications over Zoom or Teams or FaceTime or whatever it may be, then this is this would be a requirement. Um, if you've met with the client though in person, um, I would select the in person meeting, and then it would bypass uh, this one requirement. So just keep that in mind. If you have met with the customer before um, and you're taking the application over the phone then you can select in-person meeting. So just keep that in mind. Right, right, exactly. So if you did a fact finder and then appointment number two is when you're doing the, the phone call or the Zoom, you do have the ability to do an in-person application. Um, and you can still email an in-person uh, application for signatures. So lastly, you have the application number. When you get to the application section, um, it's going to... If there's any additional under, if a paramed is required, it would pop it up here. It doesn't really know because I didn't put in face amounts or anything. It's going to ask you the COVID questions. It's going to ask you if you have a companion policy. So a companion policy, maybe you're writing a house full of, you know, multiple children in the same household or a husband and a wife. Um, when you say yes to this, it makes you complete a bunch of information. So just know that what it's really going to do for that is it's going to, um, potentially get try to get them all to the same underwriter and try to keep the cases together as they work through the underwriting process. So um, if that's not important to you and, and, and you know, you have one healthy individual and one not so healthy individual, and you don't care that they're processed together, because one's going to take substantially longer, just don't mark that box. That's just a convenient item. And then here's where you generate your age, your application number. You actually I'm not going to do it today, but you just click this and it actually puts your uh, application number in here. And then it does require you to um, check this box once you've done that. And then it's gonna ask you if you have any special instructions. So my experience in as an agent is that special instructions are very helpful. Anything you know about this client or this case um, that you didn't weren't able to put on the application, uh, you want to include that here. It's going to be very, very helpful um, down the road when we're looking at at the um, when the underwriter is reviewing the case and the case manager is trying to put the policy together. So, you know, you know, um, you know, the client sees, you know, uh, three more doctors that you couldn't put on the application or something. Give us that information here. Um, your client has an upcoming medical appointment that, that you couldn't figure out where to put it on the application, you know, put that information here. Uh, your client doesn't have a driver's license. I can guarantee you if it's an adult and they don't have a driver's license, especially on um, when we have multiple family members and no one has a driver's license, they're going to kick that back to you and ask you, how do they get around? So if you know they don't have a driver's license, you simply add here, they use family members, they use Uber, their spouse has a driver's license, whatever the situation is. So you'll start to learn our processes and then you'll learn to answer the questions ahead of time so that um, it doesn't you know, cause you any delays. Because obviously a question goes out, you have to know we have the question, you have to get the answer to the question and then you have to get it back. And that can add a, you know, a couple of days every time something like that is thrown out on a case. So take advantage of that box and put as much additional information as you can, because with all the uh, technology and reports we run today, everything comes up, right? Uh, there's no, no secrets out there. Um, if you had a prescription filled or you had a lab test done for your routine CDL driver's license, it's going to populate. So, you know, you might say, no, I haven't been to the doctors this year, but guess what? I drive a school bus. So yeah, I did have my CDL um, test. That's going to show up. So you want to make sure that you put that down. So just some helpful hints on the things that we see um, in, in uh, on the sales desk. So you're pretty much, if you're at hundred percent here, what's going to happen is this continue button is going to turn purple. And then you basically, it's gonna take you to the signature tab and you then are going to verify um, the ID identification number. So whether it's passports, a security number or something else, uh, driver's license number, 
and the client's um, email address so that the signatures can go out. Um, if you have different insured and owner, obviously we'll need multiple signatures. If uh, it's a minor, if they're over 15, we're also gonna need the minor signature. So then once all of those signatures are done and you've signed it yourself, then you're gonna get an option to submit. After you finalize it and submit the case, then the case is gonna populate over under your pending business um, under sales link. Uh, lastly, in order to manage your pending business, you're going to want to print out a copy of that uh, application, or not print out, but save a copy of that illustrate of the whole act, uh, application because it will disappear off of here. I think it's about 60 days. And due to uh, HIPAA rules and pri our privacy regulations, the fact that the application has dates of birth and socials, we are not able to email you a copy of that uh, application. So you wanna make sure if you want a copy that you keep a copy and you have the ability to do that here. Um, it's gonna let you actually go into the case and print it. I can't do it because I didn't finalize it, but you can print it out here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's, what kind of questions do we have on that? So I do know there was a question um, in regards to kind of where our niches are and so forth. So um, with underwriting, so one place where we're not, so what I would say is we are competitive with pretty much all the carriers out there. Um, where we are really good is our build chart. We're very liberal. So um, we'll take some people who are a little heavier. Um, as a standard rating or even still preferred uh, versus other carriers. But one place is if you have somebody on long-term uh, uh, long term medications like uh, uh, Oxycontin or whatever, right? Pain medications, um, we are not gonna be very good there. I think a lot of carriers are moving from it. Um, but for long-term pain med use, and especially multiple pain meds, um, we're probably not going to be your carrier of choice. This question does come up a lot is our marijuana guidelines. Um, I think we're all running into that a lot more. We are pretty liberal on marijuana. So um, if the client uses, let's see, 10 times or less, let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, if it's 10 times or less, per, I'm sorry, three times or less per week, uh, we will accept at preferred rates. Keep in mind, these are all non-tobacco rates. We don't um, qualify them as tobacco for marijuana. And if it's 10 or less times per week, um, they can qualify at preferred. And then anything more uh, would be individual consideration. They could potentially be rated to decline. Um, so just keep that in mind. We are pretty liberal on our um, on our uh, marijuana guidelines as well. And if you have anybody with a mar marijuana medical ID card, then we will look at that as a whole separate deal. They can still potentially qualify for preferred, even with more use. Um, so that would kind of separate out uh, independently. Reposting that San Diego only went to host some panelists. So I wanted them to see that, but we'll get all those links in our resources section, guys. Um, we'll build that out and uh, get that to everybody. So um, Jamie, Sandy, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you know, we'll, uh, I think everybody's eyes are open to FNG's uh, IUL in our, in our agency now and really appreciate you guys coming here. Yeah, no, we appreciate the time and we appreciate everybody uh, taking time out of their busy schedule to join us today as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Have a great day.